work is not just something that we do, it's who we are. Just stop and think about that for a moment. Is that really true? Surely our identity is about so much more than just the work that we do. But back in the Middle Ages, we were known by the work that we do. And we can still see that in today's surnames, like Miller, Carpenter, Smith, as in blacksmith and locksmith. So work literally was who we are. And I wonder, has that really changed since then? Well, when you meet people for the first time, you usually ask them what they do. We ask our children from a young age, what do you want to be when you grow up? I wanted to be a scientist. My husband, he wanted to be a bin man because they were always so happy. I just love that. I absolutely love it. So again, it's about what you want to be. It's about who we are. And on game shows and TV programs and the news, anything like that, we are introduced by what we do. So work is still how we see ourselves today. It's still part of our identity. And we all make judgments about people and the work that they do. And I like it when those perceptions are challenged. And I want to talk to you about Fred Housko. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he was on Mastermind in 1980. Now, Fred captured the hearts of the nation because Mastermind was a quiz show to find the biggest brain in Britain. Now, Fred got through the rounds, and as he got through the rounds, everybody was talking about him because Fred Housko was a cabbie, a London taxi driver. And nobody expected a taxi driver to be acing Mastermind. 18 million people tuned in to watch the final that year. And you guessed it. He won. He was an overnight sensation. Everyone loved the working class hero who was suddenly Britain's biggest brain. And I wonder... Would we all have tuned in if Fred had been a lawyer or a doctor or an accountant? I don't think so. Because Fred's job as a cabbie was perceived as not, not having the right impact for Mastermind, not being clever enough. And how others see us affects how we see ourselves and how we perceive our value. How often do you hear people say things like, I'm just a temp, or I'm just a cleaner, or I'm just a waitress? And by devaluing ourselves like that, we're setting others up to do the same. And I think that needs to be flipped on its head. Just like in 1962, when John F. Kennedy visited NASA Space Center, and he had a tour, and he saw a guy with a broom, and he said, what are you doing? And the guy with the broom said, hey, Mr. President, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. And he was. The cleaner could see how he was one very important part of something much bigger, the mission to put a man on the moon. This is about value, not work. Impact, not labels. And COVID did that as well. Do you remember at the start of the pandemic, we were suddenly all incredibly reliant on some key workers who were suddenly part of something much bigger. I'm talking about the supermarket workers risking their health so we could buy our groceries. I'm talking about the factory workers 
risking their health so the supermarkets were stocked. I'm talking about the couriers risking their health so we could receive our online purchases. This was an unseen army of unsung heroes who were part of something much bigger, and their value to all of us was enormous. And as well as changing people's jobs and their perceived value, COVID caused some people to change jobs entirely. We all know of people that this happened to. So I can think of chefs working in factories, airline pilots working in supermarkets, fitness instructors becoming drivers. But my favorite was the hospital porter. He was a professional singer and all of his work got canceled due to COVID. So he got a job at his nearest hospital. And at the start of the pandemic, people in hospitals were scared. They didn't have much contact with the outside world and they were frail and worried. And so this hospital porter would sing them songs that they requested and the difference it made to these patients was enormous. Again, this is about value, not work. Impact not labels. And in amongst all of these job changes, social media hooked onto the airline pilots working in supermarkets, these high flyers doing low level jobs. And I think, why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they do these jobs? By celebrating them, aren't we feeding the perception that some jobs are more important than others and that it's okay to judge people by their jobs? And if it's okay to judge people by their jobs, where does that lead us? Is it okay to judge people by how they look, by their gender, by their religion, by the color of their skin? All of those judgments are actually prejudices and I think we know that that is not okay. So what's the answer? For me, I've got a simple answer that works for me and it's one word and it works whether we're talking about judging people's jobs or dealing with our prejudices and that one word is respect because when we respect people, we don't judge, we don't assume, and most of all, we don't allow our prejudices. Instead, we see the whole person, we value the whole person, and we accept the whole person. And you know what? Just like the cleaner putting a man on the moon, what we all do is valuable, and we all each and every one of us deserve respect. Thank you.